Hello, we are in Jeremiah chapters 12 through 15. Jeremiah is in a tough place. He's trying to do what do right by God and doing what God has asked him to do, and that's telling Israel and Jerusalem that things got to change because we're going to get destroyed, yet there are attempts on his life. And so he asks a question that's been asked before, it's been asked at since, why do evil people appear to prosper while the faithful struggle? It's a good question that that God's going to address. And then in chapter 13, we see God using Jeremiah in this huge object lesson that's going to cause Jeremiah to travel quite a bit. So let's go ahead and get rolling in Jeremiah chapter 12, verses, I mean, chapter 12 through 15 in the Good News version. Lord, if I argued my case with you, would you? you would prove to be right. Yet I must question you about matters of justice. Why are the wicked so prosperous? Why do dishonest people succeed? You plant them and they take root. They grow and bear fruit. They always speak well of you, yet they do not really care about you. But Lord, you know me. You see what I do and how I love you. Drag these evil people away like sheep to be butchered. Guard them until it is time for them to be slaughtered. How long will our land be dry and the grass in every field be withered? Animals and birds are dying because of the wickedness of our people, people who say God doesn't see what we are doing. The Lord said, Jeremiah, if you get tired racing against people, how can you race against horses? If you can't even stand up in the open country, how will you manage in the jungle by the Jordan? Even your relatives, members of your own family have betrayed you. They join in the attacks against you. Do not trust them, even though they speak friendly words. The Lord says, I have abandoned Israel. I have rejected my chosen nation. I have given the people I love into the power of of their enemies. My chosen people have turned against me like a lion in the forest. They have roared at me, and so I hate them. My chosen people are like a bird attacked from all sides by hawks. Call the wild animals to come and join in the feast. Many foreign rulers have destroyed my vineyard. They have trampled down my fields. They have turned my lovely land into a desert. They have made it a wasteland. It lies desolate before me. The whole land has become a desert, and no one cares. Across all the desert highlands, people have come to plunder. I have sent war to destroy the entire land. No one can live in peace. My people planted wheat, but gathered weeds. They have worked hard, but got nothing for it. Because of my fierce anger, their crops have failed. The Lord says, I have something to say about Israel's neighbors who have ruined the land I gave to my people Israel. I will take those wicked people away from their countries like an uprooted plant and I will rescue Judah from them. But after I have taken them away, I will have mercy on them. I will bring each nation back to its own land and its own country. If with all their hearts they will accept the religion of my people and will swear as the Lord lives, as they, as they once taught my people to swear by Baal, then they will also be a part of my people and will prosper. But if any nation will not obey, then I will completely uproot it and destroy it. I, the Lord, have spoken." The Lord told me to go and buy myself some linen shorts and to put them on, but he told me not to put them in water. So I bought them and put them on. Then the Lord spoke to me again and said, Go to the Euphrates River and hide the shorts in a hole in the rocks. So I went and hid them near the Euphrates. Sometime later, the Lord told me to go back to the Euphrates and get the shorts. So I went back. And when I found the place where I had hidden them, I saw that they were ruined and they were no longer any good. Then the Lord spoke to me again. He said, This is how I will destroy the pride of Judah and the great pride of Jerusalem. These evil people have refused to obey me. They have been as stubborn and wicked as ever and have worshipped and served other gods. So then they will become like these shorts that are no longer any good. Just as shorts fit tightly around the waist, so I intended all the people of Israel and Judah to hold tightly to me. I did this so that they would be my people and would bring praise and honor to my name.
but they would not obey me. The Lord God said to me, Jeremiah, tell the people of Israel that every wine jar should be filled with wine. They will answer that they know every wine jar should be filled with wine. Then tell them that I, the Lord, am going to fill the people in this land with wine until they are drunk the kings, who are David's descendants, the priests, the prophets, and all the people of Jerusalem. Then I will smash them like jars against one another, old and young alike. No pity, compassion, or mercy will stop me from killing them. People of Israel, the Lord has spoken. Be humble and listen to him. Honor the Lord your God before he brings darkness and you stumble on the mountains, before he turns into deep darkness and the light you hope for. If you will not listen, I will cry in secret because of your pride. I will cry bitterly and my tears will flow because the Lord's people have been taken away as captives. The Lord said to me, tell the king and his mother to come down from their thrones because their beautiful crowns have fallen from their heads. The towns of southern Judah are under siege. No one can get through to them. All the people of Judah have been taken away into exile. Jerusalem, look, your enemies are coming down from the north where the people entrusted to entrusted to your care, your people you were so proud of. What will you say when people you thought were your friends conquer you and rule over you? You will be in pain like a woman giving birth. If you ask why all this has happened to you, why your clothes have been torn off and you have been raped, it is because your sin is so terrible. Can people change the color of their skin or a leopard remove its spots? If they could, then you that do nothing but evil could learn to do what is right. The Lord will scatter you like straw that is blown away by the desert wind. He has said that this will be your fate. This is what he has decided to do with you. Because you have forgotten him and have trusted in false gods, the Lord himself will strip off your clothes and expose you to shame. He has seen you do the things he hates. He has seen you go after pagan gods on the hills and in the fields. Like a man lusting after his neighbor's wife or a sta- after, like a stallion after a mare. People of Jerusalem, you are doomed. When will you ever be pure? The Lord said to me concerning the drought, Judah is in mourning. The cities, its cities are dying. Its people lie on the ground in sorrow. And Jerusalem cries out for help. The rich people send their servants for water. They go to the cisterns, but find no water. They come back with their jars empty, discouraged and confused. They hide their faces. Because there is no rain and the ground is dried up, the farmers are sick at heart. They hide their faces. In the field, the mother deer abandons her newborn fawn because there is no grass. The wild donkeys stand on the hilltops and pant for breath like jackals. Their eyesight fails them because they have no food. My people cry out to me even though our sins accuse us. Help us, Lord, as you have promised. We have turned away from you many times. We have sinned against you. You are Israel's only hope. You are the one who saves us from disaster. Why are you like a stranger in our land, like a traveler who stays for only one night? Why are you like someone taken by surprise, like a soldier perilous to help? Surely, Lord, you are with us. We are your people. Do not abandon us. The Lord says about these people, They love to run away from me, and they will not control themselves. So I am not pleased with them. I will remember the wrongs they have done and punish them because of their sins. The Lord said to me, Do not ask me to help these people. Even if they fast, I will not listen to their cry for help. And even if they offer me burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not be pleased with them. Instead, I will kill them in war and by starvation and disease. Then I said, Sovereign Lord, you know that the prophets are telling the people that there will be no war or starvation because because you have promised, they say, that there will be only peace in our land. But the Lord replied, The prophets are telling lies in my name. I did not send them, nor did I give them any orders or speak one word to them. The visions they talk about have not come from me. Their predictions are worthless things that have been that have, they, they have imagined. I, the Lord, tell you what I am going to do to those prophets whom I did not send, but who speak in my name and say war and starvation will not strike this land. I will kill them in war and by starvation." The people in whom they have said these things will be killed in the same way. 
their bodies will be thrown into the streets of Jerusalem, and there will be no one to bury them. This will happen to all of them, including their wives, their sons, and their daughters. I will make them pay for their wickedness. The Lord commanded me to tell the people about my sorrow and to say, May my eyes flow with tears day and night. May I never stop weeping, for my people are deeply wounded and are badly hurt. When I go into the field, go in the fields, I see the bodies of men killed in war. When I go into the towns, I see people starving to death. Prophets and priests carry on their work, but they don't know what they are doing. Lord, have you completely rejected Judah? Do you hate the people of Zion? Why have you hurt us so badly that we cannot be healed? We looked for peace, but nothing good happened. We hoped for healing, but terror came instead. We have sinned against you, Lord. We confess our own sins and the sins of our ancestors. Remember your promises and do not despise us. Do not bring disgrace on Jerusalem, the place of your glorious throne. Do not break the covenant you made with us. None of the idols of the nations can send rain. The sky by itself cannot make showers fall. We have put our hope in you, O Lord our God, because you are the one who does these things. Then the Lord said to me, Even if Moses and Samuel were standing here pleading with me, I would not show these people any mercy. Make them go away. Make them get out of my sight. When they ask you where they should go, tell them that I have said, Some are doomed to die by disease. That's where they will go. Others are doomed to die in war. That's where they will go. Some are doomed to die of starvation. That's where they will go. Others are doomed to be taken away as prisoners, and that's where they will go. I, the Lord, have decided that four terrible things will happen to them. They will be killed in war, their bodies will be dragged off by dogs, birds will eat them, and wild animals will devour what is left over. I will make all the people of the world horrified at them because of what Hezekiah's son Manasseh did in Jerusalem when he was king of Judah. The Lord says, Who will pity you, people of Jerusalem, and who will grieve over you? Who will stop long enough to ask how you are? You people have rejected me. You have turned your backs on me. So I reached out and crushed you because I was tired of controlling my anger. In every town in the land, I threw you to the wind like straw. I destroyed you, my people. I killed your children because you did not stop your evil ways. There are more widows in your land than grains of sand by the sea. I killed your young men in their prime and made their mothers suffer. I suddenly struck them with anguish and terror. The mother who lost her seven children has fainted, grasping for breath. Her daylight has turned to darkness. She is disgraced and sick at heart. I will let your enemies kill those of you who are still alive. I, the Lord, have spoken. What an unhappy man I am. Why did my mother bring me into the world? I have to quarrel and argue with everyone in the land. I have not lent any money or borrowed any, yet everyone curses me. Lord, may all their curses come true if I have not served you well, if I have not pleaded with you on behalf of my enemies when they were in trouble and distress. No one can break iron, especially the iron from the north that is mixed with bronze. The Lord said to me, I will send enemies to carry away the wealth and treasures of my people in order to punish them for the sins they have committed throughout the land. I will make them serve their enemies in a land they know nothing about because my anger is like fire and it will burn forever. Then I said, Lord, you understand. Remember me and help me. Let me have revenge on those who persecute me. Do not be so patient with them that they succeed in killing me. Remember that it is you for your sake that I am insulted. You spoke to me, and I listened to every word. I belong to you, Lord God Almighty, and so your words filled my heart with joy and happiness. I did not spend my time with other people laughing and having a good time. In obedience to your, to, to your orders, I stayed by myself and was filled with anger. Why do I keep on suffering? Why are my wounds incurable? curable. Why won't they heal? Do you intend to disappoint me like a stream that goes dry in the summer? To this, the Lord replied, if you return, I will take you back and you will be my servant again. If instead of talking nonsense, you proclaim a worthwhile message, you will be my prophet again. The people will come back to you and you will not need to go to them. 
I will make you like a solid bronze wall as far as they are concerned. They will fight against you, but they will not defeat you. I will be with you to protect you and keep you safe. I will rescue you from the power of wicked and violent people. I, the Lord, have spoken. I want to show you this relief sculpture before before we go. Uh, it, it is a uh, sculpture of Jeremiah, and he's burying that sash or the shorts that the Good News version says. It's at the Cathedral of Amiens in in France, and it's from 1220 to 1240 A.D. Uh, so history in the making, right right there. So let me just ask you as we finish up today, do you, do you cling to God like a sash does around the, re- the waist of, of a person? Is, is your desire to be close to God? I hope, I hope that it is. And I hope that you have an awesome day. Have a great day. Love you. Bye.